Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Suhi Azman. It is a up day, just to say the least. FEM KLCI actually closed up eight points to 1,685.962. A lot of contests closed up higher, 558, compared to the 333 that actually closed lower. It's an interesting day because recently everybody is feeling very, very happy. Yes, correct. Yeah, Nadia, I mean, today both Japanese and Chinese stocks are in the green zone, basically. On two things. Number one, the Japanese, the Japans, they have this Japan post, the sec, the world's second largest IPO after Alibaba. Which well, actually, it's about, the world's largest IPO since Alibaba. Since Alibaba, correct. Okay. Uh, raising some 12 billion ringgit. At the same time, you know, uh, on China, on, on the Chinese stock, they, uh, President Xi Jinping has said that the he has set a new GDP growth for the uh, 6.5% 6, 6 in the next 2020. This after the plenum. Yeah, okay. So the interesting thing about that GDP figure for China is that actually he set a floor. You know, not so much a ceiling, he set a floor. So when you set a floor, that means he thinks at least for the next five years, 6.5%. Th that, I think, is not high off the target of the original 7% they actually have. So, you know, it's they're, they're considering economic potential and risk, but, you know, they have adjusted given the current environment. Let's see how it actually pans out. But, of course, uh, closer to home, uh, talking about markets and they're uh, bouncing, Deutsche Bank, there was an interesting note from them on uh, a few days ago about how Malaysia has finally seen bottom. It's actually finally, I think, touched its bottom and found found that it's probably quite agreeable. So Deutsche Bank actually said there have been numerous, of course, uh, attention-grabbing headlines, political concerns, you know, and all of that. They, But they say, okay, and I'm basically summarizing for them here, they say it just can't get worse. It's not as if when they talk about catalysts, they, they, they're, they're basically going, you know what? We can't, they can't dig themselves into a deeper hole than they already have. And, and interestingly though, they have uh, made an analysis that they assume that the government, the Prime Minister, and also the Barisan National Assembly will remain in power until the next general election in 2018. That's what they think as well. And going regional, Nadia, just before we wrap up, you know, um, Nikkei closed up by 1.3% or nearly 234 points, while Shanghai ended the trade higher by 4.31% or nearly 143 points. It'll be interesting to see what Japan Post actually does tomorrow because they had a spectacular 16.5% climb. But moving on to our hot stock of the day, we we're choosing... Petronas Dagangan, that's a bit of a mouthful. Actually, it's been climbing by 20% since May at the end of this year. We actually chose it simply because it was one of the top gainers by the day. Uh, but eventually, it actually closed fairly fat at 22 ringgit and 56 cents if you round it up at 60 cents. So, of course, uh, Petronas Dagangan, everybody's familiar with uh, the petrol stations and they do a couple of other things as well. They sell lubricants, etc., etc. So, their third quarter earnings saw uh, rev top line actually go up 20%. Uh, but net, uh, well, sorry, go down, sorry, 20%. Uh, net profit, however, went up 36%. And I think the net profit was well, went up because of the cost and uh, efficiency management. But the thing, the thing is, if you look at the revenue, right, the revenue, uh, I mean, went down by 20.7%, largely due to the lower retail volume, uh, low retail sales volume, and also LPG and lubricants. Now, if you look at the chart that you are seeing in the in front of you, the retail volume went down by 11%, the LPG volume went down by 4%, and the lubricants went down by 8%, while the commercial ones where they sell uh, oils and they provide oils to the aeroplanes are going up by two percent yeah so the thing is overwhelmingly it's actually kind of gone down so although you sort of dismissed it out of hat dismissed it out of hat, I don't think it is because I think if you keep your OPEX and of course there's another thing about uh, accounting for classification I think for GST which is which doesn't affect operations that in in a sense I think means that you can't get a company that's not well run it, it is well run and uh, but it's gonna be tough for them for the very simple reason that Shell's still the market leader I mean if you see Petronas and Shell side by side who do you usually go to? Yeah, 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 which is, I, I don't know which one you kind of go to. Kadai Musro, I think they're wanting to, to grow, but uh, when's the last time you actually really bought anything from a petrol store that wasn't a Cornetto? Oh, uh, well, it's a bit, maybe the bread that everyone's been enjoying. Yeah, exactly. So that's one major thing. Anyway, the analysts are actually, they, you can tell, neutral all across the board. Uh, Hong Leong Investment Bank, I read the report. It actually did sound like, you know, we, we think it's, uh, you know, status quo. Target price, 23.67. M&A Research, uh, uh, hold, 22.68. MIDF, neutral at 18.89. Just to remember everything, yes, the results came out. It meant that uh, although top line dropped, uh, bottom line meant that they were holding their margin steady. And they do need, of course, want to grow their Kodai Mastro, but let's see how far that actually goes. Moving on to our stocks with momentum, we are making a future choice. I think it's a progressive choice. A progressive impact caught Bahad, positive momentum flag. This stock gained by 19% or 4 cents to close at 25 cents. Big impressive jump. 
Yeah, and the stock has been risen by 20% since the end of October 2015, or uh, end of last month. And if you look at the positive impacts, right, they are actually controlled by the executive deputy chairman inside along with the 54%, and they provide environmental monitoring and consulting services operations in Saudi Arabia and other countries. Now, ba interestingly, basically, Nadia, basically, if you hear Michael Jackson's Earth song, that's what they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. And I think, you know, if you look at the uh, current uh, Department of the Environment, right, I mean, especially the haze now, they are the one who are responsible to uh, find or to monitor the air quality in Malaysia, and they provide those data and feed them to the Department of, of DOE. So, now, yeah, all those things that you're getting, it's, uh, well, of course, the haze is now gone, thankfully. Uh, mm, thankfully, the sky's blue. Yeah, so the company actually aims to grow about annually 10 to 20%. Um, I don't know, did you like the company because I think you, you believe the children are your future? Yeah, I, I think so too because you know, I always believe in something green and when you provide something for the environment, you have to care for the environment for the future generation, basically. And I think what they're doing is actually quite good as well. Now, interesting though, Nadia, they wanted to venture into Saudi Arabia, let's say, um, Qatar, UAE and, Saudi, and, and also uh, Emirates. Yeah, so the thing is, the government contract you were talking about, they have had it extended by a year and I think government contracts are a bit love you or hate you because on the hand, good paymaster, uh, I just don't want them to have the, uh, well, Faber is not called Faber anymore, it's UAE Magenta, right? Correct. They had an issue with their share price, it was very depressed because they couldn't get uh, the increase in rates when they were doing uh, all the hospital side stuff for them. So uh, I think it's a double-edged sword, I think you need to go beyond just the government stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think they also went into some other things as well, like the solid waste management, water, uh, wastewater treatment, and, and, and so on. And I think if you look at the companies, right, you know, um, I think the environment, environmental engineering is a resilient business. Would you buy the stock, Nadia? Uh, not at 20% up, but 25 cents, I suppose you can't really kind of go wrong. But, you know, it depends on, I, I, it's not the kind of thing I kind of like, but it, it, it is a big thing, and I think environmental concerns are very, 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 very valid. But just to wrap everything up, it's pegged as positive momentum by the Edge Research. They are, of course, in charge of monitoring the haze. They aim to go about 10 to 20% annually. But let's see how they actually push that beyond just the comfort of government.